Termites are kind of amazing. Their powers of changing their world rival animals such as beavers, and they generally live their lives completely unseen. Some termites have even been documented to rejuvenate soil, and even make it a better place for an ecosystem to thrive. We didn't even really know where they should be taxonomically placed until 2007. Heck, we're not even sure how to describe them. Do we consider each individual a single unit, or simply a piece to a larger whole? Generally speaking, there are three different kinds of termite colonies. Those that live underground, those that live in dry, hardwood forests, and those that live in damp, coniferous forests. When it comes right down to it, however, all colonies are constructed in much the same way. Often, people see winged termites, and think they are a separate species from the subterranean species, but this isn't the case. Winged termites are born and raised in colonies, and then released to the world as a swarm. Termites tend to swarm on evenings after the rain, and the goal of these winged individuals is to find a mate. When a male and female find each other, they will burrow into the ground and begin their life as king and queen of their own colony. Their wings fall off shortly after their first frisk, and they'll spend the rest of their lives producing offspring. Unlike ants and bees, to whom termites are not related, the male stays with the female and is called the king. The young that the female produces will develop into either workers or soldiers, and these individuals can be either male or female. In the event of a king or queen perishing, they will be replaced by backup workers who were specifically raised for the purpose of filling in a royal vacancy. I can't imagine they would be vying for the job, however, because in the case of some queens, their bodies become so swollen with eggs that they can't even move. That just sounds... uncomfortable. The workers of a termite colony are typically white in color. They lack eyes, and their primary purpose is to feed soldiers and young, tend to the royal couple, and maintain the nest. Soldiers may also appear whitish-brown with larger heads and pointed mandibles. They are in charge of nest defense and protection. Soldiers and workers usually live to be about four years old, but the king and queen may be able to live up to 50. The king and queen are usually brown in color, and tend to be the largest individuals in the colony. On average, termites are about a centimeter long, but the size can vary depending on the species. There are more than 3,000 termite species around the world. They are found on every continent except Antarctica, though they aren't frequently found in temperate environments. They prefer tropical habitats, and generally avoid light when they can. Termites don't just consume wood, either. In fact, their digestive systems aren't even technically able to break down wood fibers, so they have developed a symbiotic relationship with bacteria that live in their gut that break down wood particles. In turn, the termites are nourished by the byproducts of this breakdown process. Some termites even grow their own fungus to eat. Basically, anything containing cellulose could end up in a termite's stomach. For more facts on termites, check out the links in the description. Did you learn something new with today's episode? Thank you for watching, and be sure to give a thumbs up for Animal Fact Files.